said, real estate is wealth. Those that control the real estate control the world. And you will find that. To so I do not, you know, most people invest in the stock market. I don't invest in the stock market. I also don't pay taxes. And I don't use my own money. Why? Real estate. So I'm not saying you should invest in real estate. But if you understand the word real estate from Espanol, real estate is real. Royal estate. Royal estate. That's why the rich invest in real estate. Okay? Royal. Even today. Even in cyberspace, it's called intellectual property. Real estate. All right? So it's very, very different. So I signed up, signed my name, sat down on the course three days later. At the end of the course, he was a great instructor because he was a real real estate investor. He didn't need the money. And that's when you know the guy is real because he was, you could tell he didn't need the money. He liked teaching. He liked inspiring people. So it's just like my rich dad. He says, you don't need the money. So then the next thing he said at the end of the program, he says, when you leave this program, it's three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, he says, your education begins now. What you do at the end, as, as Kenny says, you get through the process of the three days and you start again. That's the process. So he says, at the end, when you end Monday morning, your job is look at 100 properties. 100 properties in 90 days. Take everything I've taught you and look at 100 properties. That was the start. So naturally, 30 guys and 30 guys, 35 guys in a class, they all say, okay, yeah, we'll all do it. We all break into little teams. And as you know, by Tuesday, they'll quit <laughs> because they're too busy. You know, the, the, they got to the school, they didn't start here again. But there's three or four other guys and I, we stayed through it and we went to, went to real estate agents, went through the little files, it was, was really antiquated ways of uh, MLS, multiple listing services. We were looking for little dinky deals, small deals, because that's all we could afford. We didn't have any money. So we kept looking, you know, I go knocking on doors at real estate agents, and you know, re realtors, they're not the best investors, no, are they? No, no. I mean, they're, they're all focused on commissions, yeah, normally. And I go knocking on the doors, and the first thing they say to me, you can't do that here. This is Hawaii. You can do that in mainland, in California, Nebraska, but you can't do it here in Hawaii. I was desperate. This guy says, well, I got, I got what you're looking for on the island of Maui. Now, most people think Maui is too expensive. Like, How can that be? How can Maui be affordable? But that's your block. So I flew over to Maui. I found this little one bedroom, white, one bath, a condo, right in uh, Kaanapali, the richest place on earth. Little one bedroom, one bath condo for $18,000. So holy mackerel. The property was a little condominium, one bedroom, one bath, $18,000. U.S. It was on the beach of Maui. The reason the price was so low is the market had crashed. Smart investors always wait for the crash. So this thing crashed. I had to look at 100 properties once I left the class, three-day class. I had to look at 100 properties in 90 days and write a one-page report on each of those properties. As my instructor said to me when I left that three-day class, I was 26 years old, and the instructor says, your education begins when you leave the class, as your education will begin when you leave this class. So with this here, the instructor said, I had to borrow buy the investment for zero money, okay? Zero money. Most people will tell you, I can't invest because I don't have money. That's a loser. <laughs> Please understand this. This was 1974. The dollar had just gone off the gold standard. Everything was coming up fast. 
So I had to figure out how to buy it for zero. And the reason I say that is most poor people like Padre Pobre always says, I can't afford it. I know some of you right now are saying, well, I can't afford it. I don't have time. I have children. I have a job. I have bills to pay. And it is those excuses that keep you poor. If you do not change that talk in your head, you will always be the poor person. So there was about 32 in my class, three days long. I think only three people completed the exercise. We went, we looked at 100 properties, wrote a one-page report. At the end of the 90 days and 100 properties, this was the best property. So I went back to the person, and it was in bankruptcy. It was right on the beach, just as pretty as this beach here. And he said, I had to have $2,000 down. This is called equity. Again, it's the language of money. So I have equity. The bank was going to lend me $6,000 in debt. That was the deal. Now, I had the 2000 in cash, but the name of the game or the exercise was could I buy it for zero? So what I did was I paid for this property with a credit card. So now it was One hundred percent debt. Okay. With that hundred percent debt, I made twenty-five thousand dollars a month. Boom. I was a free human being. I never needed money again. If you can make money with no money, that is called. an infinite return. You see, the best thing about doing those hundred deals is I was learning to think about debt is good. As long as you have in your mind that debt is bad, I want to use my equity, your ROI goes down. That's a good point. And there is bad debt, of yeah. course. Bad debt would be credit card debt or it could or be Or uh, if it was costing me $25. Yeah, on. exactly right. Yeah, so there are, there's definitely debt that you don't want to get into. But so, we're talking about debt that's paid by a tenant. You know, debt that's paid off by somebody else. So yeah, that's a that's a really important point. So if, if you're borrowing money, you're going to want to make sure that you have the rent to cover it. One thing, if I hadn't done this myself, I would not understand what Kenny said. It was a 144 unit property that was existing that had it was 95 percent occupied with tenants. So that was an important piece. And then next door, it had another 10 acres. And so the deal was is that I was going to build a second phase on the 10 acres and then we were going to have one property that was 256 units and so that's what we did so we took the first 144 units and and the land and we went to the bank and we got a construction loan to build the second phase and then we built the second phase and through management through good management we filled up the property and all and then we went back to the bank and we refinanced the whole project and got one loan on it. So uh, we use debt to build it, we use debt to take out that construction debt. As a matter of fact, if you think about it, the whole system is designed to use bank financing. I mean, you know, all these hard people that are, all these people that are working so hard are actually putting all their money into the bank. Well, that those deposits are a liability. They're an expense to the bank. So yeah. If you put money in the bank, it's an expense to the bank because they have to pay you interest. I have 100% debt. You know, my first property was $18,000. I put $2,000 down with a credit card, and I was making $25 a month. I think that's the best example, Robert, because essentially the what you did was you didn't use any of your own money. So the only costs that you had 
was whatever your debt was and whatever your whatever it cost the eighteen hundred dollars on your on your credit card was. Right. So I mean, this is. But the idea was not to make money. The idea was to train my mind to think that I want a hundred percent debt. Most people, I want to get out of debt. I want to get out of debt. I want to get out of debt. And what 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 we're saying here is the debt pays all your expenses and gives you some income. That's really as simple as it gets. So we started with this. So if I have no money in the deal, it's 100% debt, and I'm making $25, what is my return on investment? It's infinite. It's yes, this. Right. I mean, you, ha you basically have no investment and you're making $25 a month. The reason why we want so much debt is because if I'm borrowing right now, I'm borrowing at say four or four and a half percent, and inflation is say four, four and a half percent, then I'm using basically your money, <laughs> pension fund, in, you know, uh, uh, the mutual funds, mutual funds, savings. insurance, savings. I'm using your money to hedge inflation and buying buying assets. So uh, that's how the that's how the system works, and that's how the wealthy get really wealthy. Okay, I'll give you one more thing where. It takes absolutely no money, or it does take some money, but it does thinking. Uh, about 15 years ago, I wanted to I wanted to have a little ranch, and Kim says, "Why? They don't ranches don't cash flow, right? It's That's land. right. Yeah. So I said to Kim, well, "If I can get a ranch for free, would you be happy?" And she says, "Show me." You know, I mean, yeah. the point here is this: it's only up here. You know, so I went round, I went wandering around all over the Southwest and Tombstone and Bisbee, Arizona, and all this. I'm looking for a property I can get for free. That was a challenge. She said, "You can have as much land as you like as long as it's free, because it doesn't cash flow." It was 80 acres in Bisbee, Arizona. So I walked up to it. I was looking at the property. And I, I knew it because it was beautiful property. It was tall mountains, oak trees all over it, a little stream running through it, and all this. And the problem was, it was $115,000. There's no property, there's nothing, no improvement, no building on it, except for there was a little road running through it like this, and there was a little building here. And this was a stagecoach depot at one time with Wyatt Earp and all those guys who go past. This is Tombstone, Arizona over here. This is Bisbee, Arizona here. So I'm standing on this property, and I said to the realtor, <laughs> doesn't know what he was, so how long has this property been in facility? He says, oh, 10 years. <laughs> I said, what's wrong with it? You know, this question, he says, I don't know. And I looked around, I said, oh, that's what's wrong with it. The sign was down. Nobody could see that they drive by it all, the, all day long. They could never see the sign. So I said, are these guys, do they really want to sell? He says, yeah, they're desperate. And I said, well, where do they live? He says, Florida. I went, all of this is good news. I'm going, okay, this is good news. I said, okay, make them an offer. And Kim's watched me and said, this, this is the offer. I'll pay you full price, because by now they want the discount because they're not selling. I'll give you full price, but I have to have this property for free. And I will pay you in one year. I'll pay the whole thing in one year. So basically, it's called, I took a note, right? So I got a note for $115,000. I take control of this property. This little building here, I put $25,000 into it, and, I, and this, this was the, the stream was running like this through it, and I built a little cabin right there. So this and this, we fixed the whole thing up, and then about nine months later, it was finished. I put it up for sale, and we sold that. We sold 30 acres. This house, this stream, I had 50 acres left, and I sold this for 215000 so at the end of the deal, I mean, it's only going on in my head. We get this, we get the, we get 50 acres, and I put after expenses, let's say about uh, 80, 80 thousand dollars in my pocket, and I had that land for free. So the, these guys are happy. I'm happy. Got my 50 acres. I never see it anymore. It's still beautiful. But that's how money is made from your head, just by understanding things. It's all education, and, and this here happens every day every somewhere, day. every single day. That could be a mobile home park. It could be a corner for a for a gas station on a commercial lot. It could be a piece for apartments. It could be a piece for single family. But this is how master plan developers make all their money. They buy a big piece of land, and then they sell off parcels to the individual yep. builders. 
And all the way down, people are taking chunks. And at the end, you know who makes, you know who's who pays for it all? The consumer. Yeah. It's whoever, you know, how, however these guys on the 30 acres make their money, or is actually pays for the whole project. Yeah. Well, well, this you know, I, I had to understand loan to value and all of those things they talk about here, but I knew this would be valued around this much, with an improved house and this. I knew the best. So I knew my target, what I had to set it out for. So these guys that went and got the loan, they 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 pay they borrowed whatever they borrowed, but I got the money here right. and I had the 50 acres. The point here is done all the time. The one point I just wanted to make was I think when I first started off in the business, I I, I wanted to just do it all myself, okay. and that was my biggest mistake. Yeah. Was you know, I thought I needed to know everything about everything, and 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 that that actually uh, prevented me from starting, and so. Now I start going to these, I, it's funny, you go to these seminars and you go to these different places and you see these people that are all trying to do the same thing and they all have that spark inside of them and everybody leaves and they don't follow up with anybody and really inside of that room is really their own team. So I would just encourage everybody to, to start asking, you don't need to know about financing, you just need to find somebody who does and go ask questions and put them on your team and you don't need to even, you don't even need to be a realtor. Uh, you just need to find somebody who is and go find, you know, and, and you start uh, you start putting this team together and the next thing you know, as you start to meet, that uh, things start to happen, momentum starts and, and uh, that's how you get the ball rolling and it truly is all about education and, and you'll learn from other people, but you don't, the last thing you want to have uh, is for you to, you, you to be the person who has to make all the decisions on everything and know everything because that will limit you severely. We had this property, Edgewood. Yep. And it was pumping about 300,000. Yeah. So Kim and I, every year, were receiving $300,000. In cash flow from the tenants. Income, most of it tax-free. Yes. Because of depreciation, depreciation and all that. All those things you have to learn. So $300,000 for most people is a lot of money. The problem was Kim and I had, I think, one million in it, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. We had one million equity in it. So what Kenny did is when he refinanced it, he gave us our million back. So Kim and I got all of our million dollars back, right? Yeah, through a refinance. And we still had this. Right. So we were receiving 300000 with no money into a deal. To me, that's, and it, that's a great deal. Yeah, and people might ask how. So well, there's, a, there's a lot of things that happen inside of here. One was that this was over a five or six year period. The rents had gone up. We had increased the value. And during that time, interest rates went down. If you remember, I think we right. borrowed the original at somewhere around 7% and then we refinanced somewhere around five. So, so we actually saved on the loan, on the, on the interest rate of the loan. And um, so what we had was we had a property that was worth a lot more and it still cash flowed very close to what it cash flowed before and we got the million out and the million was tax free because it's a refinance so when you pull money out from when you put a new loan over an old loan and you pull that money out that's tax free so with that million dollars we gave it back to Kenny another deal money same process goes out goes yeah. out goes out and now it's huge. Yeah, it's, it's what we call the velocity of money. Right. So now at that point, Robert and Kim were still in the deal. They were still cash flowing. And then that million was also at work somewhere else. And so I'm not saying it's easy and all that, but again, it starts as a process. Okay. Yeah, and it's funny. People ask, because now, of course, Edgewood is infinite. There's no investment in the property and it produces a great deal of cash flow every and year. And you're raising the rents, right? That's right. Yeah, we're raising the rents, especially now in this market. but. Now people come to us and say, do you want to sell? Do you want to sell? And, and we're, we're, the, the question is, is why would we? Because it's producing all this cash flow and we have no investment. So all it would do is create a taxable event. So we all we're... We don't want the money if right, we understand that. Right, right. So yes, there's millions of dollars in equity in the project, but we're not interested in that. We're interested in the cash flow. It's a big difference in the way we think. So I want you all to understand it starts here. Yes. You know, and if you don't start, you don't go through the process. And what I, I oftentimes talk about it is when I went to flight school in Florida, I couldn't fly, entered here, came out a pilot. That's the process. But if you don't go through the process, you, you stay here. 
the, the most important thing is how we think. Your education begins now.